to another episode of Live Your Life with Love It. Friends, I'd like to welcome you to the Flow with Love It segment of the Live Your Life episode. We've been treating the Love Life uh, series and we've been getting questions. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and take the questions as they come in. All right, here's the first question. How can I deal with conflict in relationship and marriage? Very good. We've been dealing on the Love Life series. So my dear friend, thank you so much for that question that you asked. How can one deal with conflict in relationship and marriage? During my teaching, I did say that knowledge-based decisions rather than emotion-based decisions is pivotal to the success in a relationship and marriages. So, my dear friend, what do you do when there's conflict in your marriage? When do you do, what do you do when there's conflict in your relationship and marriage? Well, try not to react based on emotions. All right? The first thing you do is get the necessary details. I know somebody may ask, because I've got this question before, how can I get the details when the other person is not cooperating? Right? It's difficult to get details uh, when somebody is not you know, willing to respond to you. But the deal here is this. Communication is vital when it comes to marriage or relationship. It is. You cannot call it relationship when there's no free ground when the atmosphere is not conducive for open honest and effective communication you cannot deal with conflict when there's no communication you cannot as a matter of fact when there's conflict it only reveals that there has been poor communication or no communication at all. Because most of the things that really cause conflict in relationship and marriage is what you call lack of understanding. Is that not so? Assumptions. This one is say, oh, I thought you said this. Or you meant this when you said this. Or you, when you did this, this is what you... But when the two parties are not willing to sit down and really deal with the issue, spread out the details, so that they can reconcile. It's going to be difficult. Imagine somebody being in a relationship with someone that you are asking the person a question like, oh, what happened? Why did you react to me in this manner when we are at this place? You know, maybe you are grappling over something. And the other person is not willing to respond. Or he even tells you something like, you don't have a right to ask me. Something is wrong somewhere. There's really not going to be a headway in that relationship. It's going to be difficult to resolve that matter. It will. And I always tell singles something. When you are dating someone, that is the period of getting to understand that person. I've said it time and time again. I, I, when, whenever I teach um, the family life, I teach on family life and I teach on the best person to marry, those are one of the requirements. Marry somebody that you know. You have taken time to understudy someone that is teachable so that when there are issues of cases of you know in instances of disagreements things will not deteriorate rather you will be able to sit down as friends and look at the issues so that you can resolve it to make things better to make the relationship move forward and that's what i always say so it's very important. You are dating a guy and you ask him, um, what's your salary scale? Um, what's your genotype? You know, simple questions. And the guy or the lady tells you, it's not your business. You don't have a right to ask me. Something is wrong because if you are not able to get information from that person, you are not able to even have a, a, a cordial conversation with that person, it's going to be difficult when you're married. That's the truth of the matter. It's going to be difficult to resolve issues. It's going to be difficult to bring up 
areas of concerns when you're married to that person. So how do you deal with conflict in relationship and marriage? Communication. Talk about it. Alright? You have to be willing to confront it. Talk about it. It's very important. Effective communication is key here. It's very important. Effective communication is key here. Between two parties. If you get to the point where you feel, hey, he or she is not responding, it's not, I'm not getting anything out of this situation, this matter or this issue that we are grappling with is getting worse by the day, then maybe you have to seek counsel from a third party. I always say it, in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. And make sure it is someone that is not a hater, someone that will give you the right counsel, a godly counsel, someone you look up to, all right? Someone you look up to. You can, you know, submit the issue, the matter before them to look at it objectively. Objectively. Where they can easily tell you, hey, this is where you are wrong, this is where you are wrong, this this where you need to, you know, uh, to work on. This where you need to make amends on your own part. And for you, for you, the other person, this is also where you need to make amends. Also, the Bible makes us to understand that we should speak the truth in love. So if you want to deal with conflict, also come from a point of love. All right? If you are trying to resolve a matter, you are trying to, uh, you know, resolve disagreement, talk with love. It's good to say the truth. It's better to say the truth with love. That is the only way to get the desired results. So what they are saying is right, but they are not saying it right. Wow. Is that not interesting? You are saying something that is right. But you are not saying it in the right way. So it's, not, it's going to be difficult for you to get the result that you desire. It's going to be difficult for you to resolve that disagreement between you and the other person. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. And then, of course, you submit everything to God. You pray. Right? You pray about it. I've heard cases of people who are grappling with one issue or the other and when they prayed, haven't tried to talk, and then when they prayed, you know, God showed them the areas that they were lacking. Many times when you pray, you may think it's your partner that is at fault. But when you pray, God will show you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, what did he say? He said, For thou shalt call unto me, right? And I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So sometimes ignorance is the, the root cause of conflict, disagreement, right? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Ignorance. So God says, when you pray, I will show you. And it could just be that you are the reason why there's conflict. It could just be that you are the reason why the matter is still lingering. Maybe you need to be humble. Maybe you just need to say, I'm sorry. Do you know how much I am sorry? How much it, it can go in times of disagreement and conflict? It could just be that God is saying, you know what? You need to come down low, humble yourself, and own your own mistake and make amends. Apologize. Somebody watching me right now, it could just be that it's I'm sorry that is going to bring healing in that relationship. It could just be. It could just be that you may be thinking it is this that is causing the, the conflict or the rift between you and, you and your spouse or your partner. Meanwhile, it is this. But when you pray, God gives you a clear cut direction as to what to do. And I pray for you, my friend, that you we come out of this stronger in your relationship and stronger in your marriage. Alright? I pray that it leaves both of you better and stronger. May you receive the grace to be willing to communicate with love, to be willing to make amends, to take responsibility and to um, carry out the needed change for things to be better in your relationship and in your marriage. Alright, so let's look at the next question. Oh, okay. I guess this this from a lady he said why is it difficult to please people i find it difficult to please my friends because they they demand too much from me i find it difficult to live up to their standards what do i do all right wow that's um that's a dilemma isn't it you are in a relationship with friends and it's difficult for you to to please them they are not accepting you because just like you said is you're not meeting up 
to their standards, right? So here's my take. Here's my take. When I was teaching during the previous episodes on the Love Life series, and I said, if you have to struggle so much, to do so much, to sacrifice, to even kill yourself, all right, just to prove a point to people so that they can accept you, they weren't yours in the first place. It wasn't yours. Because when I was teaching on the Love Life series, I did say that you should love yourself. Yes, love God. Love yourself and love others. That's why Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And love for yourself entails you having respect for yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. Your self-esteem. So anyone or any clique or association that tends to deplete your self-esteem, your self-worth, is not healthy for you. And the best thing for you to do is to cut off from such persons. We live in a world where people place unrealistic standards that even they themselves cannot meet. That's the kind of world that, that we are living in. But the deal here is stop struggling to measure up to people's standards. Stop struggling to meet unrealistic expectations. Be unrealistic. Because even these persons that are making these demands off of you, they cannot even do it themselves. Because from the question that you just asked, you said it's difficult to please them. It's difficult to please them. I always teach and I tell people, be careful of excessive and demanding people. People that are always too demanding. Do this, do this, do this, do this. They are always demanding. If the kind of people you, you relate with are people that always draw from you, that always draw from you, right? They withdraw from you. It's going to be difficult to sustain that relationship. You will wear out. You will tire out. There must be a balance. Associate with people who also add value to you, not only those who withdraw from you. It's very important because relationship is a two-way thing. There must be a degree of balance for us to term it a healthy relationship. So my dear friend, quit struggling to impress people. Quit struggling to please people and meet up with unrealistic expectations and standards. The first rule that God gave us in Colossians, the Bible said, seek to serve the Lord Christ. Do everything heartily as unto the Lord. For you serve the Lord Christ. You serve the Lord Christ. So I trust with this, you will be able to make a decision for yourself because you love yourself. Alright? Something that is better for you emotionally, psychologically, and physically. Thank you so much for uh, staying tuned, for listening, for being a part of the Flow with Love segment on uh, the Live Your Life episode. Thank you so much. I believe you've learned a thing or two from this episode. And I'm looking forward to the next Flow with Love episode with you. And I'm looking forward to the next Flow with Love segment with you. So till then, keep living fulfilled. And remember, it is life according to God's purpose. Bye for now. Friends, I would like to encourage you to make this very critical decision for your life. Decision decides destiny and everybody is a product of the choices that they make. But this one decision is very important for you to make if you must live a whole fulfilling and meaningful life. So I would like to encourage you to receive Jesus into your heart today. Jesus is the embodiment of God's love. He's the Prince of Peace. You cannot really fully know true peace and understand or comprehend the, the depth of God's love until you receive Jesus. Why? God is love. I believe you are ready to live a meaningful life. And I would like you to say this after me. Father, 
thank you Lord for sending your son Jesus to die for my salvation and he rose again for my justification right now I declare that Jesus is the Lord of my life I believe in Jesus I receive him into my heart and into my life as my Lord and personal Savior I declare that I am brand new I'm born again for your word says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed away and all have become new I declare that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus thank you father for the gift of salvation for the gift of eternal life in Jesus mighty name Amen. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you for listening. We do hope you have been blessed by those wonderful life transforming words. Join us next week for another episode of Live Your Life with Love It. For more information, log on to our website www.liveyourlifeinternational.com. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Live Your Life International. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Live Your Life with Love It for more powerful messages. For prayers and counseling, call plus 234-8032-957161 or plus 234-8055-418986. Call and WhatsApp. You can also send your questions to loveitministry at gmail.com. Live your life, life according to God's purpose.